Hey, what's going on YouTube? What's happening? So this is CC Talk It again, stopping in to do yet another video of Bold and Beautiful. This time, um, it's over the recent Soap Opera Digest magazine. This time, Brad Bell discusses, um, some of these burning questions as it pertains to the show. To me, a lot of the interviews just seems like standard executive producer speak, but I'm going to summarize each question as, you know, he answers them. And again, this um, edition of Soap Opera Digest is on the newsstands now. Um, it's entitled Big G8 Shakeups and it's expiration date is june 18th 2018 so if you want to read it go ahead and you know go to your grocery store or bookstore and try to read what it has to say but um anyhow so the first question he's addressed with is the hunter tyler return and if he has any plans to do brook ridge and taylor he says he's not ruling out the possibility but i'm gonna be real for me, I don't want to see it. And I know there's going to be some Taylor and Ridge fans that are going to be like, Wah! I No, I don't want to see it. I've been over that triangle since 2005 because Brooke has had many of loves. Taylor has had her sloppy seconds. I mean, that triangle for me was so hot back when it was established in the 90s when it was just you know, psychologically driven, and again, uh, Brooke was a little bit more independent, not just being like, I just want Bridget's penis, or I want this, like, she had other goals, other ambitions, like, Taylor was the one that was always like, you know, Ridge, you need to choose between me or Brooke, finally, you know, and Stephanie was the one that was always trying to push Taylor to try to get back with Ridge. Um, but again, it was all psychologically, it was so well written at the time. And it seems like once they got into the mid 2000s, again, they started to explore other loves for both of those women. And I just, I just never had the same gush over that triangle like I did back when it was hot and it was popping. Um, and let's just be real, for me, if Taylor's going to be on long term, I mean, if they're going to try to find her a love, make it a new love. Make her have a new man to come into her life and sweep her off her feet. None of Brooke's sloppy seconds. Again, I'm over that. I'm tired of it. Can Brooke, can Taylor have a man that she could call her own that's going to love her and, again, sweep her off her feet for once? Like, I, I need for that to happen. You know, instead of her just staying in this whole abyss of, like, she has to be with Ridge or she has to be with, you know, any of Brooke's other men, you know. But what I will say is, is that Brad needs to go ahead and write those scenes for Hunter Tylo and Thorsten K to play out as it pertains to Ridge lying on Bill that he raped Steffi. And that's why Taylor snapped and put a bullet in Bill. That's what you need to be writing Brad Bell right there. She needs to ho-check Ridge and tell that motherfucker, like, look, you ain't gonna use me as more, uh, any more of your fucked up ass schemes ever again, motherfucker. And she needs to slap the hell out of him. Them the scenes I want to see, goddammit. Mm-hmm. All right, so then we go on to the next uh, question. Um... The person who asked said, well, Bill has kind of been deplorable as of late. Has, is he going to be redeemed? Um, he starts talking about in this long-winded sense that, yeah, he can be, but he's on the edge because he's so in love with Steffi and he feels responsible for the whole, like, Hope and Liam not truly being together and being in a relationship because of his interference and whatnot. And I'm going to be honest i love steffi and bill there's no denying that i was so glad that they finally hunched and got it in but ever since they don't hunched and screwed it just seems like there's been some kind of effort upon brad bill that he is trying to slowly but surely ruin whatever chemistry hotness appeal that steffi and bill have by doing like trying to make 
poor ones put it put this way putting Liam on a pedestal when he ain't nowhere near perfect okay and then trying to constantly make Bill into this super villain mustache twirling type of dude in this story and it's just like no I, I don't like that and I just don't like the fact that Bill has to grovel for a woman to fall in love with him like Bill is kind of like those rappers that you you know that you hear on the radio and who produces songs like he doesn't have to do all that you know, if Steffi's going to be with him, she's going to be with him. But he shouldn't have to constantly beg, beg, beg and grovel, grovel, grovel to try to get this woman to be with him. Like, I just, I, I, I like it a little bit in soaps, but then it just becomes too much. And it just doesn't, again, it doesn't ring true after a while that he's constantly doing that. So, I need something very organic to happen where i know and let's let's be clear like if if they hunch the mind you already know i'm be the happiest person on the planet but i'm gonna be really happy if that little kelly phoebe because that baby should be named phoebe i don't know why brad named that baby kelly but i will accept the baby being named kelly if you told me that that baby is really steffi and bills because i'm still not 100 percent okay believe that that baby is limbs i just don't believe it sorry i don't believe it you tell me Steffi and bill that's that's his daughter oh bitch i'm i'm here for it all day every day but yeah i mean i just need for them to do do better by bill brad needs to do better by bill spencer and uh, I don't know. Just do something better with him than just groveling over Steffi episode after episode because that just after a while it's just like it just doesn't ring true. Then we go on to the other question of what's up with Sally's return. Well, he, here he's basically, you know, praising Courtney Hope, you know,'s betrayal of being Sally Specter Jr. and how she brings like that fresh type of energy to the show and in the coming months of summer, like she's really gonna bring it. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be real. I love me some Courtney Hope and I loved her with Pearson Fonday's Thomas. I thought they had really good chemistry. It would have been extra spicy if Sa Sasha, the girl who plays Sasha, was in a love triangle with them because Sasha and Thomas had oodles of chemistry. But every time Thomas gets near some black girls, Brad Bell is like, nope. <laughs> nope we ain't doing that it's like ugh, but no and i also like sally which they were toying with liam you know being with her because liam has a white knight complex and sally is more like your harlequin's cinderella tale come to life so i would have thought that would have been a good rap but since hope is back it's like you gotta move sally into a different direction now i'm seeing that you know Sally is probably going to be in a quad with Thorne, Katie, and Wyatt. Now, I'm all down for Thorne and Katie because from the scenes I saw between Ingo Rademacher and Heather Tom, I think they really do have pretty good chemistry. I'm going to have to, you know, look at this Sally-Wyatt dynamic and see how that plays out between the both of them. I think they'll have probably some chemistry, but... The story has to be there in order for me to buy into it. Because if you're just doing a quad and slapping these people together and, you know, just to tell some two-bit tale of a breakup, you know, scenario between Wyatt and Katie, I'm, I'm not going to have that much interest in it. So I hope Brad does it right and he actually... He actually plays up the beats well where I can be sold as a viewer then he goes on and starts to answer a question as it pertains to Kimberly's brown kimberlyn brown's portrayal of sheila and how her portrayal has been put on hold because kimberlyn's running for congress and he pretty much says that he has every you know he he has 
finally established Sheila yet again and he has reset her which he has I must say but he's leaving that door open I guess just in case Kimberlyn ends up losing her election and whatnot in November and I'm just here to say California California you hear me you hear me the CC talk Please don't vote for Kimberly Brown in November. I need for Kimberly to lose her election. Ooh, with the fiery white hot suns, I need for her to lose. Okay, because I need her back on Bold and Beautiful because the, I was so just happy as hell when Sheila came back on my screen a year ago. I was like, yes, Brad finally brought my girl back yes because Sheila Carter is one of my favorite all-time characters of all of soaps all time and Kimberlyn still has that that fire on screen still and a lot of times certain actors and actresses that come back after a while onto their respective soaps they just lose uh they lose something in their in, in, in their acting abilities that they don't have anymore. Kimberly still has it. So I hope that if she loses in November and Brad decides to bring her back, we can start getting some chess pieces back on to, you know, the Sheila character's orbit. You know what I'm saying? By bringing back Ian Buchanan as James. Recasting Mary. Okay with Christelle Strauss Hartley, okay? And then you could play up the dynamic with Mary. Maybe she's confused. Maybe she's trying to be the, you know, daddy's girl and live the straight and narrow, but then she got this crazy, you know, criminal badass mama Sheila that's always in her ear saying, like, you got to do bad things in order to get what you want in this town. And you can have a really good dynamic with Mary. And then you recast Thomas with a sexy, attractive actor. And then if the Sally, Wyatt, Thorne, Katie stuff doesn't pan out, you can move Sally back over there to Thomas and then do a triangle with Mary, Thomas, and Sally. Because... Just to give y'all a little bit of a history lesson, Sheila did kidnap Thomas. And she cut a piece of that baby's hair and gave it to Stephanie. And, oh, yeah. And that was part one of the few times I was mad at Brad uh, at his writing for Sheila. I was like, Brad, why you do that, man? She already crazy. Now you got her cutting off that baby's hair and threatening the baby. Talk about some... You know, she told Stephanie that if you don't stay out of my, you know, relationship with James, you know, I'm basically kill your baby or something like that. I was like, oh, Brad, why? Why, man? So, but I always forget she did take off a birthmark off of Scott's bottom, I think, on one. Uh, but nevertheless, she did threaten that baby because she loved that baby, even though she stole him. But nevertheless, um... And there's still so much story left for Sheila that you can still do. But keeping her in that musty-ass motel, having her be a waitress, ugh, I just, <laughs> Brad, come on. So, again, I hope that whenever she returns back onto the canvas, hopefully sooner than, than later, the story next time can be well thought out and way more put together and entertaining and holds my attention as a as a viewer because whew, you brought that woman back and that was the shit I mean the queen and the Sheila stuff was okay but I think it would have been better had they would have had Ingo Rodemacher's Thorn hunch on Rena Sulfur's Quinn maybe even though Quinn is a very faithful lord to her man type, that I would have went on ahead and broke that and said, look, y'all two go hunt, and then maybe she'll sit there and take pictures of them, and then when they have another fashion show, she could put that on the damn, you know, uh, TV monitors and embarrass them both, and then Eric sees it, and Eric can have a heart attack right there. Then she can get her daddy back. You know? <laughs> she can get her 
her daddy back. Cause, you know, Sheila got a daddy complex in a sense. That's why she was all, was all up on Eric and stuff. Old man Eric. But, yeah, I just, yeah, just do better next time, Brad. Will Sheila, will she come back next time? Really? So then the next question he also um, is addressed with is about Ingo Rademacher and how he hasn't gotten much airtime, story time on the show. And Brad Primus is simply like he's happy to have Ingo back on the sh- have Ingo on the show rather, and you know there are gonna be things panning out and stuff. And like I said, the quad is about to happen between those four characters, like I just explained. But I'm gonna tell you, Brad Bell, stop casting people from General Hospital. I know you love General Hospital because throughout the last like 20 some years of this show i have seen general hospital after general hospital performer come in and out of this show can you please stop casting them i mean and you don't do nothing with them because that's just a waste of their time and a waste of your time and a waste of my time as a viewer like you don't bring on talented actors from their respective soaps and drag them over to your show and do nothing with them and Ingo could be right back over there on General Hospital right now considering what is going on with Carly and her uh, and their and, and uh was it Jackson Carly's uh, daughter sitting up there like mommy is a trouble type shit and she could be over there right now, but you ain't did nothing with this man. You snatched and grabbed him, and you did nothing with Thor. Do something with this dude. Right for him. Right for him. Ingo is talented. Do something with him, finally. Okay? Then, um, the next question, he's talking about the dance mom, personality girl, um, her name is, you know, that plays Emma. She's going to be played heavy for summer because y'all know the teen stories and stuff like that always usually get played a lot during the summertime. And she's going to be, I guess, starting to get paired with Alexander Avant, uh, the British Avant, which is so hilarious to me. I just like roll my eyes at that. But yeah, he's he's going to be over there. And then I already read a few pages in that Emma is going to be a barber. So they're expanding the family tree because she is Justin's uh, niece. Yeah, she's Justin's niece. So I'm like, okay, she is the niece? Yeah, and I don't even know if Justin has any siblings. You know, I mean, I've always known him to have two cousins drusilla and olivia and i always thought he was the only child so i don't know maybe in the coming months we'll eventually see her parents surface onto the show but mm, um yeah so he talks about that a little bit and then he gets over here to kyla mosley and talks about you know her being pregnant and you know what can we expect of her and he cracks a little bit of a joke saying like oh yeah you know it'd been great if we would had a groundbreaking story of a pregnant transgendered woman i'm like brad i know that was supposed to be funny for you but she is male to female okay she can't get pregnant darling but there is still no excuse why you can't write for Maya because he goes on and says Kyla Mosley is a spectacular actress. I'm like, okay, she's a spectacular actress. Okay, why she ain't on my screen? Outside of being a talk to over this damn Steffi Liam and Hope garbage. She ain't getting no storyline. I mean, fucking Jacob Young is off contract. He's like, what, recurring now? He's over here doing his music and movie hustle now. He ain't, he ain't studying y'all anymore um, at this moment because y'all ain't trying to write for him. So, I'm like, the thing is, here's the thing. Brad is still getting awards, y'all. From, like, all of these LGBTQ awards and whatever. But he doesn't do anything with Maya. I'm like, there's still so much other, there's still so much story that they could be doing with Maya. And the refusal to do them is ridiculous. Like, this is, this character brought you eight-year highs, okay? Um, 
the Avant period brought you eight year highs, but Maya was the reason why you got eight year highs. Okay, because you told a topical storyline of a transgendered character. And I feel like there's still avenues that you need to be trying to cross with Maya. Like, w- maybe tell a tale of what would it be like if there are some people within the LGBTQ community, particularly the trans community, just doesn't like Maya because they don't, they will look at her and say, bitch, your struggle is not my struggle type of thing, you know, or you could go ahead and tell probably the tale of maybe, you know, some individuals within the LGBTQ community might look down on Maya because, yeah, she's a transgender, uh, you know, celebrity, but at the same time, you know, there are, there is some bigotry within, um, the LGBTQ community. Oh, <gasps> shocker. Oh my God. We thought the LGBTQ community was all sunshine, rainbows, and daisies. No, uh, they're human beings too, people. It's not always all what you think and what you are presented with on television. Um, but there are some people within the community that believe that because, you know, maybe if she's because she's transgender, you know, she can maneuver between being within that community as well as the heterosexual world and she won't face the same kind of a scrutiny and abuses like a person who is gay, lesbian, or bisexual. Um, maybe Emma has a friend uh, who is probably female to male who is... I don't know, being hassled a lot by people and you hassled and bullied a lot from people from her school. Maybe her, I don't know, maybe his um, family has kicked him out or something because he's transgender and maybe she can mentor that kid. There's so many stories you could be doing with Maya and having Kyla Mosel perform. Kyla Mosley performed them. I mean, Kyla Mosley, in my opinion, has been the biggest waste of talent in daytime over the last couple of years. And it's a damn shame. You could be doing so much more with Kyla Mosley. You're talking about she's a spectacular actress, but where's her storylines? Where's her storyline, Brad? You can find all the storyline time for Steffi Lim and Hope, but you can't find no storyline time for Maya. Unreal. Anyhow, feel free to rate, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about, you know, this interview that I summarized uh, from the recent Soap Opera Digest from Brad Bell. And um, I'll get at y'all later. Peace for now. Bye.